So, uh, welcome to our suite. We're here with Matt Suda Eyewear today to tell you a little bit about our brand and the background and our history. So, uh, there may be many folks in our in our industry that recall Matt Suda from its earlier, earlier uh, stages. The brand has been resurrected over the last five years after been being absent in the industry for some time and we're very proud to be able to be a part of bringing this back to the public sphere. Uh, one of the beautiful things about this is that the new owner of the company has kept the, kept the entire DNA of the brand entirely intact. So those of you who remember Matsuda for what it was, all of that is still very much a part of what we do. Uh, but now we're looking to the future. We believe that Matsuda has a, a very strong positioning in the marketplace. And all of our fans will recognize a lot of the details that made it so wonderful then and all of the, the wonderful fits that we had then. But I think you'll also recognize that we have a very bright future ahead of us. So what we have on display for you now are some of the latest pieces in our collection. And what I'll do is have Paul here give you a description of what we're going to be highlighting during our visit to Las Vegas this week. Well, one thing that Matsu is really known for is the intricate design, as well as those little statements that they make on the frames. I don't know if you can see this. He really kept with the design uh, of the original pieces. Uh, there always was that, even the, with the most conservative pieces, there's always that touch of, uh, I don't know, I mean, what, what word would you put there? Well, I think what you're going to find with a, a lot of the, the workmanship in, in the eyewear collection itself are the influences that Mr. Matsuda uh, developed during his time in Paris and in France. The, the Gothic architecture uh, throughout Europe and primarily in France has a lot of influence in the design, so a lot of the filigree work that you'll see here uh, really informs how the designs move forward. Uh, the materials in terms of the titaniums that we use and the Japanese acetates that we use are all a very important part of how we design the product because, it, first of all, it wears much better, uh, and secondly, it's some of the finest materials that you can find anywhere in the world. Uh, we've selected Although it's a Japanese brand, we, uh, it, there's a lot of national pride around this brand in Japan itself, but one of the things that we think is so important is that the finest craftsmen in the world come from Japan. They are handing down this trade from generation to generation, and it's a trade that sadly is, is slowly uh, a trade that we're not seeing being carried on as much as we like to in other, or in other communities. So we're very fortunate to be able to bring something of this level of quality, this level of style, back to the marketplace for, after being absent for so many years. So we're very proud of that. And actually, uh, whenever James took over, um, he went and uh, got some of the original guys from the original factory as well as some of the original designers. Um, in Japan, it's actually, he was saying it was a trade. This, to become a master engraver, I don't know if you notice the engravings there. I believe it takes 20 years. Exactly. Um, very similar to carpentry. Uh, but just just to accomplish these, I mean, there, there's one piece. There are tradesmen for almost every single phase of developing a single pair of eyewear. So you may have one who, is, who has a background in engraving, another one who has a background in actually the tooling itself, uh, even developing the tooling. Some of the tooling that we use... Uh, has been around since the very first incarnation of the brand. So we're lucky to have some of the original tools that Mr. Mitsuda was able to leave behind for us to actually use moving forward. And we still use that same tooling today, developing even new collections. Uh, and as Paul was saying, some of the original tradesmen who worked on the original collection now work in our factory. So it's like we've gotten the, old, the entire old band together again. So that's a really great thing for us to be able to, we're very proud of that very fortunate to have that because it really keeps the uh, the legacy of the brand intact and those people that were so proud of what they were doing then are a big part of what we're doing now so we're very very fortunate to have those folks on board. I'd like to focus on a couple of uh, the newer pieces that we have. Uh, this actually came out in New York. I wish we had a woman around here to try it on that. <laughs> hey Sarah. Do you mind coming over here and trying this piece on? 
This is one of my favorites from uh, the New York show. I actually had a couple of people wanting to buy it out of my tray. Uh, you can try this one. Mm -hmm. I haven't met one person that that did not look amazing. I don't know if you noticed the size, the temples. Yeah. Just every bit of the design is thought out and just, uh, it's all this intricate, intricate piece. <laughs> now this is a brand new piece for this show. And uh, we were raving about it last night. This is a brand new sunglass, uh, leather side shields, beautiful combination construction of Japanese acetate, titanium uh, mesh centerpiece at the bridge, which is a beautiful, people, uh, beautiful piece of handwork. And I think if there's any message to, to talk about with this specific brand as a whole is that for those of you that are visiting Vision Expo and that are looking for something that is really going to take you your clients and your business to the next level. This has to be at the top of your list in terms of what it can do for all of it. Oh, the suite number? What is this? Yeah, and we invite you to come by. Our suite number is 35106, and there's a large group of us here. We're happy to show you the entire collection, tell you the entire story. Uh, there's a lot to, lot to tell, so we'd love for you to come by. Absolutely.